Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode one of my dev blog. Yay! Missing title insert here. Um, yes, the thing you see on your screen before you is not Minecraft or any other video game. Anyway, it is in fact kind of the stock standard screen that I've been using for a while now in Unity when I test all my mad science ideas. Um, but I figure I'll start documenting and sharing some of the stuff I do because it's more fun that way and maybe then I'll have some motivation to actually finish stuff instead of always moving on to the next thing um, when it comes along. But yes, we'll see how this goes. So this actually means nothing apart from this field which does affect things and these fields which do affect things but this is all just you know basic uh, stuff that I've been messing around with to give myself experience in unity UI blocks um, not super interesting the interesting part happens when we hit this now the working title I have for this little thing is 4000 raindrops because on this map that is just generated there are 4,000 raindrops. If they stop moving or fall on a flat area, they go ping and they fall somewhere else. But the thing these raindrops are meant to demonstrate is that no matter where they fall, flat parts and defectual parts here, notwithstanding, I know what's causing them and how to eliminate them, or I might not even want to eliminate them, um, the raindrops go downhill, which, while it might seem like a pretty uh, normal thing to happen in the real world, is kind of a pain in the backside to get on procedural maps, especially quickly on procedural maps. And for the game that I'm planning to make, which is going to involve a procedurally generated map and um, snowboarding, having the always downhill property is uh, highly desirable. So that's what, yeah, that's what I've been working on. And I've finally got something that's working kind of cool. When you saw how quickly that generated, which was really quite nice, because long generation times or having to do erosion and deposition is, uh, you know, one of those things. Um, I'm going to experience, experience, experiment with uh, running a short amount of erosion deposition on this map as a base just to see what effects I get but for now we've got some pretty funky looking stuff happening which I'm quite proud of so the game I'm well I've got about 15 games that I want to make now that I've got nice terrain generation on maps but yeah the one that I'm hoping to make is almost like a uh, sim ski park where you know you have to set up your little chalet and clear runs and and uh, set up lifts and things like that and have people come to your park and spend money there and get angry if ski patrol don't find them when they freeze to death and crap like that whatever I don't know it's not fully thought out yet but the kernel of the idea is there and I'm having fun but the other thing I want to do is you should be able to go into your own park and turn yourself into an itty bitty person and sort of go Wee. and the one thing that most ski parks or the ones I've been to in the real world don't have is like little bowls in the middle of nowhere that you end up in and can't get out of they're mostly all downhill it's kind of the point of them so yes this is what I've been working on on and this is hopefully what I'm going to fill my channel with more of in the coming months weeks days I don't know reasonably often I hope um, this particular map I guess for all you for anyone who's not into procedural generation tune out now for anyone who is here comes the interesting bit um, with the map it's a Verona tessellation you probably would have guessed that from the shape of a lot of this stuff and for this particular map, I've said it's allowed to have two possible exit points. So there's one here and the big one over there. And then the map will determine the exit point for every tessellation based on... Uh, but, you know, it sort of works on a recursive one. So this cell can exit. So then it talks to its neighbors and says, 
which of you doesn't have an exit? Well, you can exit into me. And then it pushes that one onto the stack and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, I've been experimenting with like um, adding billboardy things to the map, but yeah, all this Unity terrain stuff is fairly new to me. I normally write it on my own in OpenGL and bollocks like that. But um, yeah, so the fun part about this map is apart from stuff I've done up here to make it a little bit lumpy for funsies, no noise, no purlin, nothing like that. It's all 100% deterministic. Uh, if you put the same seed in, you get the exact same map, um, which is a nice feature to have. These are all nice rounded little glacial cirques at the moment, but that's entirely up to me how the particular river valley carves through a particular uh, Veronai cell. So lots of scope to do fun stuff with that and um, yeah I'll have to actually that's a good idea in my next video I'll show you all the many many different types of maps you can generate just by messing with a few little a uh, few little parameters we're getting a bit of a bottleneck here I love how it's still moving though I'm guessing some of these guys are going to disappear if the raindrops stop moving for too long or become sleeping rigid bodies then they will reassign themselves to up in the air or if they get this far down oh that's a cool view uh, if they get this far down then they will also reassign themselves up so yes this is my project working project 4000 raindrops real name yet to be decided i don't know and this is where i'm hoping to reboot my channel because it's been pretty quiet apart from the old overwatch video uh, yeah, if you'd like more information about the technique I'm using here, then leave a comment and a like and all the rest of that stuff. And to like 20 of you people who watch my gaming videos or did watch my gaming videos, I mean, hanging out for one of them, um, this probably isn't what you'd expect, but yeah, stick around. Maybe one day you'll get to see me let's play my own game for the first time. This is kind of cool. This is like, uh, this river, so these, okay, back into nerd zone, we're not finished yet. Um, these are like 50 kilogram spheres with no friction, basically. Um, so they'll just sort of roll and jostle around. But I think this is cool. This branch of the river obviously has more um, uh, potential energy in it because it's, it's smashing this bad boy. Look at that, and then this one just kind of like flows down and they drip in and it's really cathartic. I might just record 10 hours of this and set it to music or something, but yeah, quite, quite cool. Um, actually, let's see, I'll see if I can generate another map here. Let's kill that bad boy and boot that bad boy up again. Oh, there we go. Um, man, where is it? Hi, Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. Let's have a look and see what we get. Jung, 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 chugs away. Boom, it's different, that's for sure. So here's one of the exits over here. And you can set it to like, um, I've had it run before where any cell that can exit exit so you just get all these rivers draining out which is kind of cool there's there's so much stuff it's very um robust this framework but yeah for now i'm just going going big on the fact that you can mostly always go downhill from somewhere and get to the bottom there's a few of these little little local minimi 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 -mini things partially they're caused by the resolution of the height map as well it's not super uh it's not super high oh, look at this here we go oh, nope ran out of oomph oh well <laughs> anyway it's kind of nice you can see there everything's flowing nicely down the rivers so yeah i guess we'll leave it at that um Thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next time. Bye.